inviting back into the studio the informer Michael Ray. Uh, first time you and I spoke, Michael, we talked about uh, the uh, the rights of men to uh, play uh, a strong role in the uh, in, in raising their children. Uh, there are a great many uh, examples that we've seen over the years of. Uh, men being on the wrong side of uh, the family court and we've seen a number of judgments come out that uh, were unfairly I think at the end of the, end of the day described and certain parents felt that they never got the, the rub uh, of the, the court, they never got the, a fair shake so to speak. Now in your particular case you, uh, you've had a remarkable story and uh, just refresh my mind again you your your daughter you and your wife separated correct yes you have a daughter a gorgeous daughter yep how old is she now uh, eight years old eight years old and when the time came uh, for you to separate you had a, a big responsibility yes who would end up with the child who ended up with the child well, we actually went to 50-50 just about, George. The, yep. the court was really good. Yep. But at the time, I was blessed with a uh, potentially life-ending uh, illness. So the court went straight to 50-50 to ensure that my daughter would have some memories of me. So at nine months old, um, it, it, the, I found the family court really fair and the, the judge one of the most decent, fair-minded men, despite the perception that the court is biased towards women. Yep. I didn't find it that way. And what I've come to realise is the court just wants a continuation of the status quo. Yes. So what I normally say to blokes going into it, if you're going for 50-50, if you think that that's a fair outcome and going into it, your wife was doing the majority of the, the childcare, the hands-on things, mm. don't expect the court to give you the opportunity to do what you've always had the opportunity to do before the separation, after the separation, simply because your situation's changed. Yes. So get your ducks in a row early. Take the time off work, ask for the flexi time, do the school runs, do all those. So when you turn up at court and you say to the judge, no biggie, want it to continue on. So I want to be as involved after the separation as what I was before. So you're proving continuity, aren't you? Yes. Continu con continuity of uh, not only the behaviour, but also of uh, establishing a, a continuity for the child yep. to, to know that there are two key players in her life or his life and they will play a, an important role in their development. Exactly. Unfortunately, um, Charlie's mother doesn't play any part in her life um, through her choice at the moment. It's been just Charlie and I since she was two years old and I've loved every minute of it. But the, because I came from a place of scarcity and fear after hearing the horror stories about the family court, how men were going to do it, I've lived every day going, you know what, I've got the opportunity now, I'm going to cherish it because you never know what tomorrow holds. Correct. Uh, has that made you uh, a more strident, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, 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 member of the, the community that, that wants to see men given an equal right? Yes, I believe that nothing will change society quicker mm. than the paradigm shifts and men are talked about and fatherhood is talked about in the same glowing terms as, as motherhood. motherhood. Yeah. And I'm not trying to diminish motherhood no, because no, 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 no. Any, any man who stood in the room while their child's come into the world and isn't filled with a mixture of admiration and just awe-inspired, um, just devotion for that mother going through that, tinged with a sense of guilt and a sphinx to tightening fear that can only happen through it, yeah. isn't someone that I can relate to. So I'm not trying to diminish the, the wondering of it, but I'm also saying that until men are seen as that co-equal, every bit is caring because all of this fetishized images of mother, the hallmarks, the only a mother's love, you know, mother knows best, all of these things, not only does it diminish and devalue your father's uh, input, but it also places huge pressure on women who may be fr struggling with the normal frustrations of raising an infant, anything from, you know, colic to sleep yeah. to all the rest of it, because and I'm we, meant and, to know. And we also see mothers, uh, not many of them, but we do see uh, uh, mothers 
who also struggle with giving birth and with raising their children. And they don't quite have the same stigma that the man can suddenly end up with. So I'm just wondering, do you speak to men? Do you speak to many men in your uh, you day-to-day know, -day existence uh, and in some of the shows that you do? Do you get a chance to speak to some of the men who've lost uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in their livelihood uh, their, uh, their job and they still want to play a part in their family's uh, makeup? Do you give them any advice? What, what advice do you normally hand out to them when you see them going through a tough spot? And at the moment, we should be, be saying that um, there are a great many families, yeah, whether they're divorced or not, going through enormous pressure at the moment. Uh, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic has uh, taken a toll, not only in this country, but around the world. And we're seeing and hearing every day, it seems, uh, more companies laying off workers. Uh, that, of course, creates a cascade of, of, of problems. How are you, how are you um, uh, encouraging people to think during these very difficult times? George, the, the biggest thing that I try and get across to guys is you've got to be very careful. Six out of every eight suicides at the moment in this country are men, and it's that slippery slope. So don't take it all on. Be aware. Stay connected. I'm, I'm stunned to hear that number because we have so many support agencies. What are they doing wrong? What, what aren't we doing to help all those men, or, or women for that matter, who, are, uh, who feel that they've got nothing to live for and, um, and their, their only option is to take their life? Surely we've got to be better at, uh, at providing support. Traditionally, men have a problem reaching out, asking for help, because it's seen as weak. It's not manly and it's not masculine. And the thing I really noticed coming into uh, parenthood as a solo dad and being around such a large group of mm. mums mm. is mums have a list of people on speed dial that they can ring for help, support, all the rest of it. Men, not so much. We don't tend to it's catch good, up. It's a very good point. Unless it's an event, an activity. We don't just ring up. That's a good point. I'll we, come around. We have our sport normally. Where yep. we, we all gravitate together. Uh, or a barbecue, yep. uh, or, or a party where all the men are in the kitchen uh, telling stories. Um, that's a very interesting point. Women actually by, by nature have that network, don't they? Yes. Men? No. No, it's, it's seen as a sign of weak. So what can we do? What programming can we, what, sorry, what reprogramming can we do? Because uh, you just can't start, start dropping a whole bunch of names no. on, your, on your mobile phone. Okay. But so we, we've got to, to, improve, to improve our, our network. We need to get rid of the divisive nature of what's become the equality debate. So we need. Easier said than done, though. Yeah, right? yeah and even to change uh, culturally men's things takes generations. It takes media and it takes, you know, men often hit hurdles when they want to be involved in their kids' life, everything from employers to media. You know, when you've got your employer, when you say, my wife's going in for a scan well, you don't need to be there. And we've got so many studies that show that fathers are actively involved in the pre-pregnancy, the scans, the appointments, all the rest of it, stay disproportionately involved after the birth as well. Mm. When we set up, at the moment, fathers are entitled to two weeks at minimum pay when their child comes into the world. And that sets the tone and trajectory for the father's involvement because when he comes home, well, mum's been with the baby all day, baby's upset, what do I do? Is that driven by, by money or is it driven by, the, by convention? Convention, George. It's just outdated gender expectations and things like that. I get as much of it from women as I do from men. And as I've said before, I just can't understand the mindset that says the most masculine, virile, manly thing you can do is to have kids, bring them into the world. But if you want to stay at home, and raise them and look after them and not worry about your position, power, possessions, all the rest of it, somehow you're a eunuch. And Great stuff. Yeah, it's just silly. We're talking to equality advocate Michael Ray. It's always a joy to get him in the studio. Michael, leave us with something positive. 
so we can uh, hold, that'll hold us up, especially during this COVID lockdown, because Victorians at the moment have been told by government that they're uh, going to have to stay home, yeah? And if they work, they're gonna need a permit. So enormous pressure on a whole bunch, bunch of people. And uh, a number of uh, businesses have had to close their doors. Imagine the toll that's going to take on our mental health and the anxiety that, uh, that comes from that. So what message can we give them? I find I've had my crisis before. My ducks were aligned through a health, health scare. Yes, yeah, so it was a health emergency. Yep. So you had to do a lot of recalibrating. Yeah, and that's why I that said- That helped you enormously. It's a gift, that clarity through crisis that focus you. The house is on fire at the moment. You've got to rush in. What are you prepared to rush in and save? because that's what's important. And it's my family, my daughter, her mental well-being, the rest of the stuff. I know it's hard, but it's a story you're telling yourself. It doesn't matter because if I can walk out of that burning house, which is the crisis, the pandemic we're in at the moment, with my arm around my daughter, with her going, it's gonna be all right, dad, that's all that matters. That's the minimum, that's the starting point. Anything after that is a bonus, but that is the foundation on what I'm going to set my mind for today, making sure she's okay, we're okay, because times are hard, times are different, but it won't last. So, you know, don't bunk it down, don't wear it all on yourself. Now, before I let you go, you've got to tell me you had the great joy. It's winter time in Victoria, and we've had a real cold snap. Uh, what were you doing out near Bacchus Marsh the other day? Snowed in our backyard, Snowed George. Snowed in our backyard. So, so, so Winter Wonderland, yep. you and Charlie making a teepee. Yep. That's out out in the snow. We, we had our dogs out, out there making a, a teepee and it was just magical. And that's, that's why I'd say to, to most men and to most parents, think back and the best thing about what I do and the space I'm in is hearing about memories that are made with parents, you know, and they remember back and, you know, dad always used to do this. And, and they last forever. Yep, be that parent. How do you want to be remembered? Make those memories.